feel free to ask questions or comment as well. Then we'll take a break along about about an hour from now. And then we'll come back and uh, uh, I'll be happy to engage with you on your own struggles as it's to the extent that you feel it's appropriate to to uh, to give a little phenomenology of, of what you're working with and how it relates to Edinger. And we will we will talk about uh, implications of Edinger's work for our personal inner work because it's huge, huge implications. So that's what I propose to do this afternoon. And let me just start out by doing now what what I intended to start out with and uh, got enthusiastic about something else and uh, and left out. <clears throat> and I just want to start out if you're if you're trying to make sense of uh, your own stance and style as a theorist and practitioner, as a healer, whatever the particular um, uh, location, whether it's pastoral counseling or analysis or social work or, or spiritual direction, this, it's very important always to realize uh, theory matters. Facts don't come interpreted. Empirical facts are constructed based on theoretical perspectives and paradigms. They don't even look the same to persons with different theories. The, the so-called facts don't even look the same, depending on what theoretical framework you bring. So theory really matters. It's not a completely wasted task to give some idea about comparative theories and, and about where a particular theorist uh, could be located in, in the different options that exist. And uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time with this, but just to say, you know, there's, even within Jungian circles now, there are a number of different sort of uh, uh, clusterings of attitudes about the psyche and about analysis and assumption, different assumptions. There's much more diversity than you might imagine if you're not familiar with it. And there's more overt uh, uh, seeming uh, consistency than there is in fact. One place, of course, to look is that, uh, for some of the background of this, it is, is that Andrew Samuel's uh, work that he did uh, called Jung and the Post-Jungians. Uh, I have a number of quarrels with that book, but it's a useful book. Uh, uh, and it frames uh, uh, some different emphases people make. Uh, in Jungian psychology. The things I want to just, you, you should look at that to get a little background on this. Jung and the post-Jungians. I just want to lift up some some different theoretical kind of possibilities within the practice of Jungian psychology and psychotherapy that uh, you need to think about as you try to locate Edinger and figure out what he's doing as opposed to what other people are doing. First of all, there are there's an idea of what is Jungian and what is post-Jungian. I think we have to ke be careful about the use of the word post-Jungian. A lot of people that consider themselves post-Jungians uh, are really followers of James Hillman and Hillman's so-called archetypal psychology. That is a, that is a point of view that really does not put emphasis, almost any emphasis, on the things that Edinger is talking about. And our, an archetype, when discussed from the point of view of, of Hillman's arch, so-called archetypal psychology, bears little resemblance to what Edinger is talking about. It's very important for you to know that. You don't realize that when you read uh, uh, somebody that's influenced by Hillman, you will be puzzled because it will be totally different from what you're hearing from Edinger. Uh, and it is totally, I'm trying to tell you, it is totally different. It's not the same thing. I don't really consider archetypal psychologists Jungian in any serious sense of the word. Uh, they're smart people. I'm sure they do good work, uh, you know, but at a serious theoretical level, it's not Jungian. Yes, I will be, that's what I'm going to get into. So, because we start out with, Classical Jungian psychology, what sort of thing would you believe if you were to be identified as a classical Jungian psychologist or a psychoanalyst? We have some of those around still. Not very many, but we have some. They are people, many of them, 
do still retain a belief that such a thing as the archetypal self exists. A classical Jungian will typically believe that. Uh, a classical Jungian will also believe in some, <clears throat> some version of the collective unconscious, that there is a collective unconscious that can be studied and to some degree known, that it's not just total chaos. There, is, there, is, there are patterns in it, such as those that Edinger points out. There are some classical Jungians that follow that school that's represented by Louis, Marie Louise von Franz and who put tremendous emphasis on dreams, dream interpretation. And for them, in that particular school, there's these sub-schools of classical thought. In, 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 in that school, <clears throat> the thing that makes it Jungian is that it's dream interpretation. The way of the dream. I mean, when they talk about what they do is the way of the dream. Of course, if you're a serious theoretical analyst about these matters, you know that interpreting dreams doesn't tell you anything about your theory. Freudians interpret dreams. Gestaltists interpret dreams. Uh, archetypal psychologists interpret dreams. Uh, the way of the dream as a way of denoting what classical Jungian analysis is, is that is that's not, that's kind of misleading. It's more than just interpreting dreams. There's something about the assumptions you're bringing to the interpretation of dreams. And the assumptions that are shared by, by classical Jungians uh, are, are usually the, some assumption about the collective unconscious being something that can be understood, not perfectly, but you can do pattern recognition, get some sense of the mapping of it. Another emphasis that they put on it, and uh, this is very widespread, uh, they put a lot of emphasis on interpreting complexes. In fact, early in the early days, Jung's psychology was called complex psychology. That was one of the names for it before analytical psychology was called complex psychology. That is, focusing on the complexes. And so you'll find a lot of uh, traditionally oriented Jungians who some of them will do all this emphasis on dreams, and that's be mostly what they do. Others will focus a lot on interpretation of complexes. What are your complexes? Your personal complexes. And let's get conscious about your personal complexes, and let's sort them out, and have you become conscious of them, and perhaps be somewhat disenthralled by them, liberated from them in some way. And that's, that is something classical unions do. Uh, and some of them think that, uh, I mean, that's the way some of them practice. They almost never talk about the stuff that Edinger talks about. And they, they, they are identified as Jungians. Uh, from, a, from an analytical point of view, though a, theoret a theoretician's point of view, such as mine, I look at that and I say, well, but that doesn't really make you a Jungian. Because a lot of people interpret complexes. That's what object relations theorists in Freudian tradition do all the time. Object relations theory is the theory of complexes. And Freudians in general, if you look closely at their psychology, they're doing complex psychology. That's under different labels. While, while many uh, people that identify as classical Jungians uh, focus on the complex, they're doing, the, for one thing, that really doesn't help you differentiate what's unique about Jungian psychology although they kind of think it does. Then you have Edinger, who is, I would say, not a post-Jungian at all, in a theoretical sense. He sees himself as an heir of Carl Jung, and he sees himself self-consciously as carrying forward Jung's fundamental revelation. And if you read these prefaces that he's written in these books, this is an apostle. You know, this is this man has a sense of destiny and stewardship of this, of the, of the Jungian dispensation. See? So he is he is uh, he is a classical Jungian, and uh, in, in my view, the things that he highlights are really the things that make Jungians Jungians. That is. While he emphasizes dream interpretation, that is not what, what really is the litmus test that divides, you know, that, that separates Jungians from others. 
And while he is willing to look at personal complexes, and he does so in this writing, and does a good job of it, that's not what separates him from non-Jungians. Uh, what, what he does that I think is so clearly standing sent in the center of Jung's uh, uh, work <clears throat> is precisely his emphasis on the scientific, he, he sees it as a scientific quest. He is doing an empirical scientific psychology of the collective unconscious, the objective psyche. And he is seeking to make clear to people, both professionals and laypersons, what he calls the anatomy of the psyche. He intends, by virtue of his work, to lay out for us and to explain to us the way the, ob the objective psyche operates and how it impacts us and what we need to know about it in order to have a chance in this individuation process. So Edinger is a classical Jungian, but in my view, when they call him the Dean of Jungian Analyst in this obituary, I take that seriously because there is a real sense in which what is unique in Jungian psychology is clearer in Edinger's work than it is in von Franz, or than it is in many of the other people uh, who we recognize around the country as being, uh, uh, as identifying themselves as classical Jungians, because he is so upfront with us in every one of these publications that he is examining in a science, empirically, sci empirical, psycho, uh, psychological, scientific approach to the objective psyche. While he is interested in and concerned about people's complexes, he understands from his point of view that that is not the most important thing in analysis. That it is important to know it, it's important to look at it, it's important to get aware of it and work on them. But uh, the most critical thing is asking the question, what is the archetypal psyche doing in me now? What is it doing to me? What is it doing in me that I do not, that I'm not aware it's doing? What is it trying to do in me? What am, what is my actual response right now to it? How is it related to my personal quote problems unquote? All, the, in other words, <clears throat> we know now that how you frame something really matters. And what I'm suggesting to you is you want to locate Edinger, you're right to locate him not as a post-Jungian, not as somebody that's one of the, the so-called clinical school of Jungian psychology, which is a misnomer. Uh, Edinger's very clinical. But he, he is a classical Jungian, but he's a classical Jungian who is upfront about the things in Jungian psychology that make it Jungian and not Adlerian or, or Freudian or, or Gestalt or behaviorism or any other, uh, uh, or self-psychology in the Freudian sense uh, or any of those things. So when you frame Edinger's work, whether it's about psychology, psychotherapy, analysis, spiritual direction, or religion. That is the frame that you have to be comfortable